Mosquito 5 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we're going to be bringing you the latest about your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Jan Campbell, and Jan is the Executive Director of Domestic Violence Solutions for Santa Barbara County. Welcome, Jan. Thank you, Cinder. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. I know you have a big story to tell us. You do such important work and you've been doing it for so long. So can you give us just a little sense of, of what the organization does kind of on a regular basis here for Santa sure, Barbara County? Sure, I'd be happy to. So Domestic Violence Solutions for Santa Barbara County is a countywide organization. Our primary mission is to provide safety, shelter, and support for victims and their families suffering from domestic violence. We do that okay. in three emergency shelters, and we also provide transitional, uh, we have a transitional housing unit. Okay, so you actually house the women? Yes, actually we serve all genders. Um, we are actually considered a homeless agency, oh. because when people are fleeing domestic violence, they're homeless. Oh, yes, of so, course. Uh, uh, individuals and families can stay in our emergency shelters up to 45 days during which time we provide what we call case management. So we're, oh. in essence, trying to help them get their lives back together, That's great. deal with their children, connect with social services. Oftentimes there are legal issues mm -hmm. that we need to deal with. And then at the end of 45 days, we're working with them constantly to try to find safe and secure housing. And as you know, housing in Santa Barbara County oh, is yeah. tough. So we... Um, sometimes people come, go into our transitional housing unit, which is 16 one-bedroom apartments, and they can oh. stay in that, shell, in that unit for up to 24 months as they work, wow. as they try to rebuild their lives. And it's a HUD finance property, okay. so it's for low income, mm -hmm. which most of our, unfortunately, most of our clients are. Mm -hmm. Many people find uh, safe housing with a friend or a relative or go out of the area Unfortunately, sometimes people go back to their abuser, which is mm -hmm. it's crushing for us, but due to financial um, and other issues, that's sort of part of the whole system. So we work really hard yeah. to get people to be independent. Yeah, I think that's... Uh... So tell us a little bit about uh, victims. I mean, what? tell us about the, the people who are okay. victimized. Yeah. So domestic violence, or, or we call it intimate partner violence, is really a silent epidemic. So we've been in existence in Santa Barbara County since, well, actually for 42 years. I can't really do the math. I think 77, something like that. And the people that we serve, the clients that we serve, reflect the demographics of Santa Barbara. So all ages, all genders, all ethnicities, de uh, demographics. So domestic violence, unfortunately, isn't just restricted to a specific slice of the population. And frankly, it's not just not just restricted to women. One in four women have been victims of domestic violence, which is pretty severe if you think about it. And actually one in four men, we've had, and actually we have right now, uh, several men at our shelters, which people find astounding, but when you hear the stories, you're not surprised. So, so DV affects everyone. And since it is a silent epidemic, you know, people always ask me, well, did the Me Too movement help you? Did that raise the awareness? And it did to a certain degree, certainly women's issues are in the forefront, but it's almost easier to out somebody or, or, or react against somebody that you work with or that's a, mm -hmm. a professional mm -hmm. colleague. But when you have to deal with someone that you love and, trusts, and trust, then the stigma, the shame of admitting that, you know, that's a failure. And so that's really tough for people. They don't 
we have had several people in our shelter since I've, I've actually been with DVS only a year. Today, actually, is my year anniversary. Congratulations. No, I can't oh, believe it. I can't, it either feels like I've only been there a couple of weeks or 50 years, so yeah. depending on the day. But we've had, we have two, um, two clients right now. One client had been with her um, abuser for close to 25 years. That's mm -hmm. a long, and that, those mm -hmm. stories are that, that's pretty, pretty well known. I mean, that's fairly common. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to leave. Yeah, we hear about that. A and lot. We, and we scratch our head. Why in the world would somebody Be stay? Because it's a syndrome. It's, it's a series of power and control and there are different phases. There's kind of the, the building the tension phase. Everyone that's been in a relationship feels this. You know, you're kind of irritated. You know, the tension kind of builds. In a DV situation, the tension builds, then, there, then the violence erupts. There may be constant psychological and emotional abuse. Oftentimes that's, the, that's underlying everything. And then there's a, a honeymoon phase. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. Mm. Please forgive me. And then it starts all over again. Yeah. And the saddest part is oftentimes there are, it, it, the way DV and family violence affects children, sometimes we have more yeah. children in our shelter than, than adults. Oh, so that's, that's the saddest thing. And trauma, you know, we work really closely with Calm and FSA oh. and a lot of the other uh, agencies in Santa Barbara County that deal with with family welfare, dealing with the whole family, Calm in particular for child abuse, mm -hmm, sure. and um, a great majority of domestic violence perpetrators and victims have had childhood trauma. It's yeah. just it just it's so it's cyclical. R right. Okay. Gotcha. So we try not to give up because it's mm -hmm. it's a daunting problem, but we're looking much more towards prevention, education, outreach, dealing with teenagers. Um, teen dating good. violence is really on the rise, particularly with social media. It's, it's just, and it's on both sides, girls and boys. We just finished Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Oh gosh, I want to hear more about this prevention. So tell me how you do that. Well, um, it's, I think it's, prevention is the long ball. You have to do it, you have to start. And we've been doing outreach and education for quite a while. The way that domestic violence organizations are funded by the state of Cal, we get most of our funding from the Office of Emergency Services, uh, okay. Cal OES. And that money is funneled to the state through the Violence Against Women Act, which by the way, needs to be re-upped in Congress. So write your congressman, mm -hmm. although Salute already signed on, so that's good. <laughs> um, so violence against, the, the federal funds come to the state and then the money goes out to all the DV shelters and it's primarily for shelter. So okay. a bulk of the funding goes for shelter. So we have to raise money for pri through private funding okay. for, for the prevention, although the state right now is looking at a fairly large infusion of funding for prevention and education. So if we, we can work with families to talk about what healthy relationships mm -hmm, look like, mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly alcohol and substance abuse mm -hmm. is, plays into, um, into the whole thing. Poverty, unfortunately. I heard John Clark say recently, although I, I said I wasn't going to quote you on this, and he said, well, I didn't really say this, but you can quote me anyway, <laughs> of the Bauer Foundation. Um, poverty is a full-time job. And that really struck me because... I see our clients coming into shelter and just like we're going to go home and maybe we're going to pay our bills or mm -hmm. we're going to make our doctor's appointments or get our car tuned, whatever we need to do, we're living our lives for the most part without trauma and violence. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. imagine people that have to deal with this kind of thing every single day through the, through the lens of trauma. So we're trying to kind of head things off at the past, you know, mm -hmm. have upstream preventative strategies look at dealing with the whole family instead of maybe just mm -hmm. just the victim. And of course, immigration status plays a huge yeah. part in all this yeah. because if you're working in the fields and you're being abused, you're certainly not gonna call law enforcement because you, don't, you wanna keep your family together. You just want the abuse to stop. Yeah. So Gosh. it's a really interesting and very complicated. Yeah, it, it's so complex. It's really complex, so. 
But it's, so, but it's we're, we're trying to unravel it. But you're, you're working at it from both ends, and that's, we have that's to. great. Yeah, yeah, because people, when, they, when they're fleeing for their lives or for the lives of their children, they need a safe, secure place to be. Mm -hmm. And um, we try to, for the, as, and we've done a really good job, I think, in making our shelters home, feel homey. Mm -hmm. um, our, all of our advocates, I have the best staff ever. I mean, I've worked with a lot of great people in Santa Barbara over the last, what seems like, 50 years. But the group of people that are frontline client advocates, they're all young women. Um, I think the oldest one might be early 30s. They're all bilingual, all bicultural. they um, working on their master's degree. They're some of the kindest and most intentional people That's that so I've great. ever... And so that they inspire me every single day to come I to work. That. Yeah, it's really... For an old broad such as myself, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to have. Yeah. A young staff that kind of right, right, really right. keeps you on track. So, And so um, you are a 501c3. Yes. So people can donate. People can donate. Make, make tax deductible donations to yes, you. Yes, yes. And go to your website. Yes. You probably have a donate here. We have a donate. Button. And people always ask us, what do we need? Uh -huh. So in addition, certainly to cash, which is always good, we have a link on our website that goes to a, a, another website that lists all of the things we need in our shelters. We always need um, brand new twin bedding because we have all oh. twin beds. Okay. Towels, toiletries, feminine products, uh -huh. um, warm clothes in the winter, children's uh, toys. The only thing we don't take is stuffed animals or anything oh. that's used, you know, certainly oh, sure. because of the various cucarachas and whatnot. Yeah. But we um, we have great relationships with a lot of other nonprofits. The food bank is amazing. Um, we Catholic Charities um, up in North County. We work very closely with the uh, New Image Thrift Store, so mm. people will donate to that, and then our clients can get vouchers and go in and and secure that's whatever great. they need. Oh yeah, and Such that's a collaboration. Great... It's it's really important, Cinder. You know this because yeah. you're a nonprofit um, specialist. But we, in fact, we had our 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 latest luncheon that we had. The theme of it was, it takes more than a village; it takes a community. Mm. And I hosted twenty executive directors from all of all all the folks that I knew from my days at the Santa Barbara oh, Foundation. Gosh. But we all work really closely together because we're serving the same population. In yes, essence. yes. Um, so that's what's been really. I, I have to say fun about this job. Uh -huh. There's not a lot that's fun, a lot yeah. of it's rewarding. But working with the other agencies to really understand the boots on the ground effort and the nonprofit sector in Santa Barbara, from my perspective, really needs a piece, the Nobel Peace Prize yeah. for how hard they work, for how they collaborate together, and what what they bring to the to the community at large, what, what government can't do, mm -hmm. what um, you know, the, the corporate sector is stepping in too, but nonprofit community is really the safety net for so many things yeah. from arts and culture to the environment mm -hmm. to health and human services. You know what a big nonprofit person I am. Yes, I do. Yeah. And volunteers, do you use volunteers? We do use volunteers. For folks that want to work with our clients, we, they have to go through a 40 hour state training, which we provide. The next one is coming up That's great. late in the spring in May. Check our website. We use volunteers for our tabling and outreach events, as well as we are now forming a cadre of volunteers to help us answer our crisis lines, very similar to what uh, Stessa does, so to back up our advocates. Gosh. Lots of volunteers. And so there's lots to find out on your website. Yes. Oh my gosh, you are doing such good, important work, Jan. Thank you so much. It's really, it's really been rewarding. I've gotten way more out of it than I've ever put in. So yeah. that's and awesome. thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to hearing everything that you're doing down at CAC yeah. and, uh, and following along on all the other nonprofits. Yeah, yeah. So. And thank you for being with us today on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.